In this tutorial, you are going to be learning how to create this animated drop down menu. So, in this example, we've got a hamburger menu here. We click on it, the menu expands, the content below gets pushed down to make a uh, way for this new drop down. And then we press it again, it collapses back up. This gets pushed up because it's now gone. And here's an example of where you might want to use this. So, here's the official Bootstrap website. Obviously, we're going to have to minimize it so we can see the hamburger menu because it should only really be seen on small devices. And then we press it again. There's a similar. So it pushes everything down. Uh, and then we press it again. It collapses back up. And then this gets pushed back up because it's now gone now. So they can uh, fill in the, into the gap created. So, yeah, tune in to find out how to create this. Okay, so at the moment we've currently just got this plain HTML boilerplate code with some text here, which as you can see looks like this, no styling or anything at the moment, so that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to link to style sheet, style.css, we'll create that. First things first, we're going to put style and everything, box sizing, border box to help with the margin uh, and padding, and then we're going to move all the browsers at uh, default margin and padding. And then for the body, we're going to set the background uh, background image, actually, because we want it to be a linear gradient. And then we're going to say the direction will be to bottom right. And then we'll say the first color will be white. And then we'll say transition to light gray. And then we need to put, we're going to say height, 100 viewing height. So we can actually see the gradient background. We're going to say display flex because it will help with what we're going to do later on. Flex direction will be column. So the elements are positioned vertically. Justify content will need to be center. Uh, actually, no, justify content will be start. Because that will be on the horizontal axis for uh, so it'll be on the vertical axis for 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 flex column. So it will it will be at the top. So it'll start at the top, but then align items will be center. So therefore it will be horizontally centered, but vertically it will be at the top. And then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use uh, a font called Open Sans, which is available for through Google Fonts, which is a regular one. Import it by copying the link tag, and then we'll say and then we'll copy this font family. So go back to our website. Yeah, well this has been sent and now the text has and the background can be viewed. So that's all well and good. What we need to do now, we'll use this later on, but we're going to create a class. We're not going to use it at the moment, but it's just going to be displaying none. This is to hide uh, the drop down initially. Just at the start. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to create the actual hamburger menu so the user has something to click on. So, we we'll need two divs to do this. The first div will be uh, just a div with no children. Well, well, no actual content other than another div. Its class will be menu BTN, and then it'll have one singular child div, and the class of that will be menu BTN underscore burger, and then we set the menu BTN class first. It'll be flex because we want to um, center its content both horizontally, horizontally and vertically, and we position relative because we'll be using absolute positioning later on inside. Margin top will be 20 pixels, so I won't be touching the top of the screen, it'll be, just, it'll be pushed down a little bit. And then yeah, like, set, like I said before, we need to sense everything both horizontally and vertically. And it'll be 80 pixels, and it will be a square. So that will also, so the height will also be 80 pixels. The min height will set to 80 pixels. Because it's flex, so we don't want it to be squished too much. The 
cursor or your pointer to indicate that the user can click on it. And just so you can see what I'm doing at the moment, I'll say border black solid to, uh, two pixels. Yep, so as you can see, this is what we're creating. We'll move this border after, it's just so you can see like, how it, this actually works. And then we'll do, we'll start the child diff now, which is a menu BTN underscore burger. The width of this will be 50 pixels. Height will be 6 pixels. Background color be black because we want the, the, the lines to be black. And we'll say border radius to 5 pixels so it's not just a boring rectangle. And we refresh the page now. Here we go, we created the middle line. But we want two more lines, one above and one below. So the way that we do that is we use uh, the pseudo elements before and after. So what you need to do is, first before we add any uh, differentiating aspects, we we'll need to use combine select like that to select both of them. And set it so they have the contain, so basically just copies of the middle line. Now what before is, before is basically uh, the last child of this element and then after will be the first child of this element. Uh, but the, we will need to change two things actually because we are using pseudo element. We'll say content will be nothing just so we're telling CSS that we don't actually, we're not, this is only, these pseudo elements are only for styling basically, we're not, we're not going to contain any text and the position will be absolute so we can move them up and down in relative to the uh, container and then we'll do the before first so move this one up we'll say transform translate y minus 20 pixels and then for the after that will just be tw plus 20 pixels or positive I guess and yeah, we created it now, and because we created this, we can now remove the border, and we should have a created hamburger menu. Yes, as you can see here, it looks good. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to create the actual drop down, just static with animations to start off with. So we'll create a new div below our burger menu, but above the text. Its class will be burger items, and we'll also put the high class on, but we're not going to do that. Uh, for now, because we actually want to see what we've created. So first item, these are just placeholder items, obviously, because we're not. It's not a real website. We'll add three. Okay, we've done that. Let's see what it looks like. Obviously, there's no styling, because that's what we're going to do now. Might as well just add some comments just to separate it out a bit. Okay, so burger items, text align will be center, we want to center it, transform, origin will be center and top, this relates to the animation which we're going to create later, and then we want to select the divs inside, uh, so to do that we use a child selector which is specified by the greater than sign. So yeah, what this is, we're selecting the, the divs, so these basically, because they're children of the burger items. Padding will be 10 pixels vertically, 100 pixels horizontally, because we want, we want to, uh, the padding to be quite wide. Colour will be white, it's the colour of the text. The background colour though, we'll choose... Uh, dark colour, so what we do, we go to material UI, I'll post the link in the description, copy this one here, obviously you can use whatever colour you want, it's just for demonstration purposes, we'll say border, 4 pixels, solid black, uh, but there is a problem with this actually, if we, but yes, as you can see, the problem with this is, the bottom borderline, because it, this duplicate, uh, 
Because it overlays basically from the border, from the bottom border of the first item and the top border of the second item. So we don't want that. A solution would be to remove the top style of all. Sorry, there's something wrong with this. Uh, yeah, there you go. Sorry, the border top. Yeah, there you go. So none. So remove all the borders for the top element. The problem with this is, yeah, so we need a top border for the first item. So what we do is, we go to, we select burger items, and then the first, the first div by using the first child uh, pseudo selector, and then for that we'll set its top style. Be solid, and as you can see, we created it there. And what we need to do now is we need to create the actual animations. So we're going to create a class called drop down iPhone open animation. We're going to create an animation called open 0.3 seconds will be its time. We're going to set it to ease in and out and forward because we want to retain its last frame when the animation's over. The keyframes open because that's the animation name. We're going to start off at uh, transform will be we're going to say scale y and zero so it's completely squished on the vertical axis. And then at the end of the animation, it's hundred percent. We want it to be fully expanded. So we'll say scale y to, to be 1. And now this is the animation for when the drop down is opening. We want to now create the reverse animation, so the collapsing animation. So we're going to create another class now. Called drop down close. So we'll say an animation called close, 0.3 seconds. Copy and then yeah, forwards. Just copy what we did here, just with the different animation name. Call it close, 0%, transform. Scale Y, this one will start off at 1 because remember it will start off fully expanded. 100%. And then we want to collapse back up to 0. And what we need to do now is we need to create the JavaScript file to configure the animation. So we'll say script.js, create this file. And then we'll create a reference to the drop down element. The one that contains all the individual divs, not the actual divs themselves. So we'll say let drop down equals document dot get elements by class name. Now we call it uh, we call it burger items. We select the first iteration because there's a plural get elements. It's not get element get element. It's get element. And then we're going to create a boolean called let, let is open. We'll set it to false because initially you want the drop down uh, to not to not be open. Obviously, we want it to open when they can actually click on it. And the way that we do that is we're going to say on click and then link to a function. So we we'll say open drop down. So it will call this function whenever the user clicks on this element. So we'll create this function. And then we're going to say, obviously you want to set is open to true now, because they've clicked on it. So we'll say it's the opposite of is open, which is currently false. But when they click on it again, we want the uh, element, we want the drop down to close. So it needs to be set to false. So that's the reason why we just set it to the opposite of what it was previously. And then we're going to create, uh, yeah, so if is open, it's set to true, then we need to open it. So we're going to say, Drop down dot set attribute class. So what this is doing, we're configuring the values of its class attribute. So what we want to do is we want to obviously give it the burger items class 
but you also want to give it the drop down open class which will activate the open animation and then else we need to close so we're gonna so again we want the we want the burger items class but we want to we want uh, the close animation instead of the open animation so we use the close class for that now finally we don't want this to um, be up here because currently it's visible but you don't want it to be visible uh, when the user starts off on the page so the way that this is the reason why we create the high class we can simply just add it there and now it's not there oh it's just currently a problem here I just figured out what it was. So basically, we put this on. We put this on click attribute on the wrong, and then we put it actually on the drop down itself instead of on the button, which is what it needs to be on. As you can see, we put so we put it on the button now instead of the drop down on the actual right element. So yeah, we press it. The problem, yeah. So there's a problem here with that with the HTML document flow. So what's happening is basically. Uh, this drop down is getting rendered because the hide class gets removed. So this gets pushed down, but because we're just using the transition element to animate it, which doesn't affect the HTML document flow, once it animates the backup, this doesn't uh, get moved back up because technically it's still there, it's just not visible. So we don't... Uh, what we want to do is we want to basically give the drop down a max height, which will push elements out of the way. Okay, so you want to go to the burger items class, and we're going to find out what is... See, it's a bit fiddly, this, but it's the only uh, real way that I know of to do it. So we're just going to type in a random value, because the problem is we can't use auto, because it won't animate properly then. So yeah, that's not what we want. We want it to be a bit higher than 120. What we're going to do for this, we're going to move the high class just temporarily, just so we can see what the right value uh, is. We'll try uh, 150, and yeah, this looks good now. So, well, uh, we may, oh yeah, sorry, we'll add the high class back now. And what we want to do now is we want to change the animation. So, for the open animation, you want to start its max height uh, at zero pixels, because we don't want it to have any height whatsoever. So this paragraph will be, uh, be basically as high as it can be. It won't, it won't be pushed down by anything. But then when we want, when we want uh, it to be fully expanded, the drop down, we want the paragraph to be pushed down, which is why we set its max height to be 150 pixels. So now it'll push elements down. And then for the closure, it will just be the opposite. Because obviously it, it is the same animation, just in reverse order. And now once we've done that, it should work. So yeah, as you can see, it pushes up, pushes down. And yeah, that's how you do the tutorial. So if you have any questions or you want me to clarify any, any of my explanations, then please don't hesitate. Post them in the comments box below and I'll answer them. I'll answer all the comments that I'm made aware of. Uh, yeah, and please, if you did enjoy this video, then it, you would do me a huge favour if you liked and subscribed. That would be greatly appreciated. Uh, yeah, and peace out, guys.